of our Pajama Pants Sew Along with So So English Fabrics. I'm Ellen March, the Director of Content for Sulky of America, and this is Dylan. Hi. Dylan's eight years old, and he has been helping me um, cut out the pattern as well as cut out the fabric, right? Exactly. So today we're gonna get to the sewing, the most fun part, right? Dylan loves to sew. So Dylan is gonna be sewing on this Brother Machine, which it actually also has embroidery capabilities. You can see it has a Star Wars theme to it. There's actually removable face plates for it that are Star Wars themed. So that's another Amazing. great way <laughs> to get your kid into sewing is get a machine that really speaks to their interests because they're out there. Amazing. And I am going to be using a Baby Lock Triumph serger. So we're going to set up our machines with the thread that we talked about yesterday. I'll be using Sulky Poly Deco thread in the serger and he is going to be using Sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread in the standard sewing machine. He's going to be using a jersey needle with a stretch mm -hmm. stitch and for top stitching he will just be using a straight stitch that's a little bit longer than normal to accommodate the stretch of the fabric. I'm gonna be using a four thread overlock stitch. And what do you think, should we get sewing? Yeah. Let's do it. We're using Sulky 50 weight cotton and steel thread on the sewing machine and we're gonna wind a bobbin. We'll swap out our needle to install a size 7010 organ jersey needle. This has a ball point so it doesn't pierce the fabric and snag it. We're going to thread the serger with Sulky 40 weight poly deco thread for the construction seams and I'll set it for a four thread overlock which will stretch with the fabric so the seams don't pop. Dylan chose four different colors just for fun and then he could see which needle or looper creates which part of the serger stitch. So then he'll learn how the machine works. You can also set your sewing machine for a stretch stitch if you don't have a serger. This looks like a diagonal zigzag stitch. Or you can choose a standard zigzag stitch and lower the width to one millimeter. The first step is to attach the pocket pieces to the pant legs, and I'm going to do that at the serger.
One is wrong side out and one is right side out. And we are going to take the one that's right side out and match the inseams with the one that's wrong side out. So I actually put this on my arm like a sleeve and this is really great to get the kids involved, but it's a little hard to show on camera. I've got the seam, the inseam facing my hand and I'm gonna hold on to it. Then I find the inseam of the other pair of pants and I'm gonna slide my arm inside the pant so that my inseams are right sides together. You see that? My inseams are right sides together. Then I slide my arm out and here are my two crotch seams of the legs. And I'm going to make my seam allowances go opposite directions that's called nesting the seams. And I'm gonna put a pin in there. Then you wanna go ahead and pin along your crotch seam so that you can sew it without it stretching. Just gonna put a few pins in. And it, your fabric is gonna wanna curl a little bit because of the stretchiness of the knit. So just keep making sure you're putting your presser foot up and down when you're sewing and going slow and continuing to straighten it out as you sew. Just a couple more pins here. Now I'm gonna serge this seam. I'm gonna go from the center back seam to the center front seam. If I was sewing this on a standard sewing machine, I would go from the crotch seam up to the center back seam and then the crotch seam up to the center front seam. Here we go. So Dylan and I have the pants almost done. We need to attach the waistband. So to make things easier, Dylan and I sewed together the front waistband piece and the back waistband piece. Those are the seams you can see there on the side. And then we inserted our elastic already. So the elastic is inside there. To make it easier to attach to the top of the pants, I went ahead and surged that whole edge. So everything in here is contained. So now Dylan, what we need to do is we're gonna kind of match up those side seams of our waistband with the side seams of the pants. So we need to get this in here so that right sides are facing and we're gonna pin, but it's not gonna fit the whole way around because it needs to be stretchy. So we're gonna only pin the center front, center back and side seams. So I'll do this side seam. You see how there's a seam right there and a seam right here? We're gonna match those up and I'm gonna put a pin. And don't pin through the fat part, which is where the seam is, pin to the other side of it. Okay. So can you do that side? Yep. 
and back through. Perfect. So now we've got our side seams pinned and I have kind of a fold line along the center front. It's hard to see on the camera, but we can see it. And we're gonna match our center front seam with that fold line and put another pin. And then same thing, I have a little fold line here. We're gonna match that with the center back seam and we're gonna place a pin along that seam. So now when we take it over to the sewing machine or the serger, we can stretch our waistband to fit between each pin as we sew. And I know I said earlier we don't wanna stretch as we sew, but we do wanna stretch the waistband as we sew and that's gonna cinch it up to our waist. I went ahead and surged the waistband and we stretched it as we were sewing it so that it would fit the outer edge of the pant. And now we're gonna turn it right side out and Dylan is gonna do some more of his top stitching just to secure this seam allowance and make sure that it's going to lie flat. So we're gonna do a line of top stitching, Dylan, along the blue flat fabric. Do you see that? Okay. So let's turn it right side out. And we are already set up for our top stitching. Okay. Let's start at our center back seam right here. And put this under the presser foot so that your needle is going to go in right next to the white, but not touching the white. Can you see that? All right, so let's put the presser foot down. Can you put your hands on top of mine while we sew? All right, and slowly. Perfect. Are we sewing straight? Yeah? Okay, stop for a sec. So another good thing to think about to control the speed that your child is sewing is if you have a machine with speed control, you can put it all the way down going as slow as you want or as fast as you want so that no matter how far they press on the presser foot, it'll still go rather slowly and they won't be sewing too quickly. Wanna put your hands up here again? Okay, go ahead. All right, we're gonna finish up the waistband and then it's time for the hem. Now we've got our waistband sewn and we have our nice little top stitch seam. And you know what? If that seam isn't straight and it isn't perfect, it's no big deal because it is a stretchy elastic seam and no one's gonna know. All right, so after your waistband is complete, it's time to do the hem. And I highly suggest that you have your child wear the pants and mark the hem just to make sure you're not gonna make them too short. All right, so I've got the hem pinned in place. It's a double fold hem. And I'm gonna show you what I was talking about with the Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. Now, this is a very stretchy seam. It's gonna be hard for kids to sew, really people of any age to sew. Um, straight without puckering and without that lettuce wave that you can get. Which, you know, if you're making a pair of pants and you want that lettuce edge, go ahead and stretch it while you sew it and you'll have this wavy sort of edge. All right, so I've cut a strip of the sticky Fabrisolvi and I'm going to peel away the paper backing just like any kind of sticker. And you can see this is the tacky side and this is the not tacky side. And again, this is gonna wash away completely after we've made the pants. So along your fold, you'll just place the sticky Fabrisolvi 
just like a sticker along your hem. And this is going to secure it while you're sewing. So just cut enough strips to go around the entire pant leg or the entire hem of the pant leg rather. And then you'll just go ahead and sew your hem in place. So Dylan was able to sew this completely without pins. And you can see he just sewed through all those layers. And then the first time that the pants get washed, the Fabrisolvi is just going to dissolve completely away. So that's a great, great tip for sewing knits, especially hemming knits, which can be challenging. All right, so we're gonna go see what these look like and Dylan's gonna get a chance to try them on. Oh, 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 oh,